I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons, my wildlings, knights, watching Kingsguard. My Kingsguard include Brendan, Nick, Oscar, Stuart, Josephine, Ikaika, Amanda, RJ, Shad, Nicoletta, Ezra, Jennifer, Jeffrey, Sarah, Pat, and Kevin. Thank you all so much. You're the best. Welcome back to the Fancy Network, everyone. My name is, of course, Jimmy Nuts, and today we're going to be doing a no-spoiler review of Hyperion by Dan Simmons, an absolute staple in the science fiction genre, and also a Hugo Award winner, which I didn't know until I picked it up, and I thought that was quite cool. And this book is so impressive <laughs> in a lot of different ways, and I'm going to talk about some of the things that I really enjoyed. Um, but overall, as I make my way through sci-fi, I'm taking kind of a chronological approach with the big hitters. Uh, sometimes I read something new like The Expanse or something, but for the most part, I'm trying to get a lot of the older stuff out of the way before I dive into everything the genre has to offer now. And Hyperion was something I wanted to read right after Dune, and I did. It's one that has been recommended to me by so many people, and I see why. Um, I see this get a pretty mixed response. I think it's overwhelmingly positive, but there are quite a few people who maybe don't resonate with this book, and I'm going to try to explain exactly what's going on here, as well as how it's told, because I think that's one of the more interesting um, things about this book. And uh, hopefully by the end you can decide whether you would like to pick it up. I definitely would recommend it. So Hyperion, what is it? It is a science fiction novel, of course. Um, it is told in a way that almost follows seven different stories, uh, short stories. Everyone is on a pilgrimage ship to see this monster called the Shrike on the planet Hyperion, which is kind of on the edge of the galaxy. Uh, and the Shrike is this monster that some people worship, some people want to destroy, some people just want to know what's up with it. Uh, I mean, it's a very mysterious, daunting figure hanging out here on Hyperion, and he's around in this section that has time tombs, which essentially travel backwards in time. So it's, it, you know, has all that good science fiction stuff that we like there, messing with time and having kind of an alien type presence, uh, which is really cool. But these seven people that are on this pilgrimage are all looking for answers. Uh, in a way, trying to solve their own riddles in their lives. And a lot of them on this <laughs> ship don't know each other, but they all seem to have a secret. And it kind of is the driving force of the story going through as you find out why each person is there. Some of the stories are action-packed. Some are emotional. Some are thought-provoking. Some are kind of, I don't want to say lighthearted, but you might get a chuckle out of it. And it provides just so many different perspectives. Uh, this bounces from a third-person POV into a first-person POV, and uh, maybe even another one I can't remember at the time. Um, but Dan Simmons does play with the perspective quite a bit and does it in a short story format. So people have told me the Canterbury Tales. I know what that is. I've never read it, uh, but they say it's the Canterbury Tales in space, so maybe that will resonate with you as you're watching this. I like short stories. I like the fact that seven short stories come into this book and all kind of tie in together at the end. Uh, on this pilgrimage to see the Shrike. And each different story, you know, each short story that's featured in this book, it um, kind of has its own merit and why it's here. And it starts off with one that I really enjoyed. It might have even been my favorite of the bunch if I sat down and thought about it. I think the first one actually resonated with me the most, and it was a priest named Hoyt. Hoyt's story is absolutely wild. <laughs> um, it has chock full of religious allegory, if you're into that thing, which I definitely am. And at times it felt borderline horror-esque, which is interesting because Dan Simmons does write other things other than science fiction. He's written horror. I think he might even a, wrote a thriller at some point. Uh, and Dan Simmons is one of those interesting writers where like, I know there's people who will say, this book by Dan Simmons is my favorite book of all time. And I don't like a single other Dan Simmons book. But the book that they like, it's not congruent through each reader. Like some people love Hyperion, some people hate it, some people prefer his other stuff. Um, or they prefer one of the Hyperion books because there are sequels. Uh, to the first one. It's interesting. Dan Simmons just seems to be someone that has a different approach with each book and it either resonates with you or it does not. But I was definitely getting those horror vibes here from Dan Simmons with Hoyt's story and at the end of the day it was just really creepy but also fascinating. And it was immediately in the first story that I saw how much I'm going to enjoy Dan Simmons writing. I don't know what his other books are light, like but he will like verbatim repeat a sentence and maybe change just the way that it's structured or, um, you know, whenever he puts in a punctuation point, right? Like he paces the sentence different even though it's a repeat sentence or he'll change one word and it has a totally new impact. And I think that's really consistent and thoughtful writing and you're getting the most miles out of your words that way. I think Dan Simmons writing in this book is borderline flawless. Like I really loved what I got from his prose here and the way that he 
told his story. The second story was Kassad's story, which I didn't like nearly as much. Um, it is much more on the military side of things. And Simmons does get to flex his combat writing, which I thought was pretty good, to be honest with you. I, I didn't have any issues with it. It's just that I found the religious tones of Hoyt's story to be a lot more meaningful for me and just my subjective taste. And then the third story changes up everything. I like how he switches up his approach here, even the perspective, the way that it's told. All of it switches up here. And it's from Martin Selenius, who is a kind of like storyteller slash poet. And it's much different than the first two. And he talks about like the struggling, uh, struggling to get his books published and then has a hit success. And you'll see when you read the story, but I liked seeing the publication process. And I imagine Dan Simmons is writing from experience in, in some way there. Uh, it was kind of a cool peek behind the curtain in a lot of ways. And I think this here had a really good distinct character voice. Uh, for Martin and I like the fact that he was talking about how he needed to dumb down his story so he could sell more copies and then he related that to fast food consumption and I think that's a pretty popular topic when we come to any uh, entertainment uh, medium right when we talk about dumbing stuff down doubling your dollars as Jay-Z would say uh, we see that with movies a lot right not always the best made movies or the best written books you know get all the awards but it's more about the accessibility across the board and I think Dan Simmons is probably making a statement on this uh, with Martin. And I liked it. It was different. Definitely, you know, way out of left field when it comes to the first two POVs and how they were structured and even just the voice that's used to tell that story. And I think it's a good entry uh, among the seven origin stories. Then we come to the story that I think is in contention for my favorite story against the priest stories, Hoyts. And that is Saul's uh, story. It is heavy. It's very, very heavy. And all I'll say is that his daughter has an ailment and her ailment is fascinating. I wonder how many stories after this were based around Rachel's uh, ailment, his daughter. Uh, it makes me wonder, and that's all I'll say, but seeing him go through this uh, is heart-wrenching and the way that it impacts him and his wife and his family and Rachel even, it's, it's, it's very uh, emotional and I think it's very well done. Saul's Jewish history also comes into play here for his perspective and his inner monologue and he has an obsession and a newfound obsession with Abraham's trials and tribulations from the Bible. I found this to be wildly interesting as someone who really enjoys biblical history and the historicity of religion uh, across the board. Uh, this was like written for me. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed that piece. But I was sitting there figuring out my head exactly what Simmons was trying to get across. And I don't know if I've ever settled on what it was. But what I do know is that he told the hell out of Saul's story and gave it so much depth and nuance and just little refined edges. You know, everything had, um, you know, that little minute detail. Uh, you know, f for instance, like him having a Jewish background and him being obsessed with Abraham, like those things uh, didn't even have to be in the core short story of Saul's life. But because they were, they added just a whole new layer that I really got invested in. And ultimately, this is where Dan Simmons, no matter which one of your stories is your favorite, this is where he becomes excellent at writing science fiction because all of the best science fiction for me and my dollar is whenever we take all these high concept, futuristic, sci-fi ideas, and then we connect them back to the person who is reading it, which is to say, exploring the human condition. Mission accomplished. It's a heart-wrenching tale. It made me feel like I was inside of the story in this crazy futuristic world, going to this mysterious planet to, to see this alien type beast where time travels backwards. All that kind of goes to the wayside. And at the end of the day, the character and me are human and I connected through the page. Uh, you know, bravo to Dan Simmons writing out Saul's story. It could have been just Saul's story. I think this would have been a, a high mark for me uh, just based on that. With it coupled with all the other stories makes this book very, very special. Now, the story that I liked the least was actually, uh, there's a detective type story towards the end. Uh, and it really for me, it was just kind of meandered a little bit. I thought it went a little bit long. I really like the history of how we advanced in technology and what happened to Earth. That stuff is among my favorite stuff <laughs> uh, in sci-fi. Any story that includes like what happened to Earth, even uh, The Expanse does that at some point. They kind of just make like small comments on what happened. I love that stuff. Uh, he does that here in the story, which is stuff that I really enjoyed. I generally like detective stuff. Like it's not my all time favorite, but like I can get behind it. But this one mm, just drug on a little bit. And I did feel like a slight dip in the book at that moment, but the story wraps up nicely. And if it just been a little bit shorter, I think I would have liked it a lot more. And then, you know, whenever you sell something with seven people coming together and they all have secrets and they're seeing this alien beast, it's like uh, the ending has to stick. 
and I, I am actually curious what's the popular opinion of the Hyperion ending for book one, because there are sequels. Because for me, it's almost like, I think some people might consider it a cliffhanger. I actually don't think it's a cliffhanger. I think the way that it comes together and the twists and the turns that we take when we get to the ending is almost poetic. That's the best way. Like, it felt like a very encapsulated story, which it was very much about, uh, to take a line from another story, it was very much about journey before destination and about who these people are and what they've went through and what this trip means to them and what it will be whenever they finally maybe uh, you know, get these answers at the end of the book. I don't want to tell you one way or another what happens, but um, it's just one of those things where I don't know. I want to read book two, and I'm going to, but I could have read Hyperion 1, stepped away, and said five stars. Like, that's how I feel. And I wonder how I'll feel about book two because that's where the crowd gets really mixed up. Some people love book two, some people don't. We'll have to see where I land with it. Um, if you've read it, let me know down in the comments. I'm curious. Please don't give me any spoilers, though. Please. <laughs> uh, but that, that's the best way I can describe it. I thought it came together so well at the end. I enjoyed all the twists and the turns uh, that he took to get us there. I liked the secrets that get unveiled. And at the end of the day, it just felt very poetic. And it felt like a book that should have won the Hugo. And I'm glad that it did. I feel like, like I, I feel like this year I'm using the term masterpiece a lot. But it's because this year I'm knocking out a lot of the heavy hitters, right? I think as a book, uh, this is about as good as it gets. Now, that doesn't mean that it has to resonate or it will resonate with everybody. But Hyperion uh, is just so tight in a lot of ways. And even the detective story, I said it kind of felt like it meandered a little bit. I bet you there's a lot of people out there going to watch this and say, I didn't feel that way. I think it offers something for a lot of different people. Now, based on the structure of the story, of it being kind of short stories and coming together, and the topics that it covers, maybe it won't resonate with you. But for me, I can see why a lot of people think this is a staple in the sci-fi genre. It is, in my opinion. Uh, does it take the crown of my favorite sci-fi book of all time? Probably not because I like some of the ideas uh, and themes that are explored in Dune a little bit more. And I also just love the world building in Dune. Whereas this was very much about characters. It was very much about themes. It was very much about the inner thinkings of people going through a lot of strife or difficult situations. Uh, so in some ways, yes, I did like it more than Dune. And in some ways, not. Um, what do you like out of your sci-fi is also going to be very important here. I think if you like a very close-knit character, a multiple character <laughs> arcs, uh, and the bigger humanity questions, I think that this could really resonate with you. I'm recommending it clearly, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm so glad I read this. I'll get the book to some point in 2022, uh, probably whenever I'm feeling it. I get to help doing all the sequels and that, but yeah, five stars. I mean, absolutely five stars. Not that my ratings really mean anything, uh, but I just had a great time reading this and I wanted to review it and I'm glad that people recommended it. And uh, I'd like to hear what you thought of this and I'd also like to hear what you thought about the sequels. Uh, and as always, I appreciate you spending your time with me here today. I'm not going to ramble on and on and on. Uh, I'll definitely read all of Hyperion at some point. I'm also going to read more Dan Simmons just because he has so many different books and a lot of people like them and it seems to be... Uh, one of those things where you either love it or you hate it. So I'm excited to see where I fall with him and all of his other works as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching this review. If you found it helpful or you just like the content, hit like and subscribe. If you loved it and you want to support me here on the channel, I do have a Patreon that's optional down in the description. You don't have to do that, but it is appreciated. And I want to thank everybody who is subscribed to the Patreon and liking and subscribing my videos. The channel is kind of growing and it's weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. Um, and I hope that I can continue to provide, uh, you know, information or entertainment or whatever you get out of these videos. Um, I'm just happy to be here talking to you and doing it for, uh, for everybody. So uh, until I see you next time, I hope you're good. I hope you're safe. And remember to always keep turning the page.